The note on the fridge was there to remind you to buy groceries. You didn't. I bought groceries yesterday, though. This is what I'm getting. That's pretty much all I picked up. Mwakube, everyone. My name is Fukat, and welcome to Merry Christmas Alfred Robbins. This is an old point-and-click horror game that I played way back in my fetus days, and if I can recall, I was very adulpated by what happened at the end. So I'm going to excogitate what happened throughout this playthrough. We're going to go ahead and start this now. Game is about 20 minutes max, so it shouldn't take too long to play through this. There's our apartment. You're Alfred Robbins, you're 42 years old and work at a local post office. It's the night before Christmas and you recently just returned home after working overtime. Neither you nor your wife has had the time to make the proper arrangements to for, for a Christmas present and you decided to use this last night to surprise your family. Times have been rough so make do with what you have and celebrate the holidays to your best effort. So yeah, I'm definitely squinting right now because the resolution is small. I can't play this in full screen because... No recording software detects it, which is absurd. Your son's backpack is lying in the corner of the room. You search through it and take his pencil case. Why? Because game plot. You go through your son's pencil case and find a tube of super glue. Very odd thing to put into the pencil case, but okay. You enter your son's bedroom. He's fast asleep in his bed. Alright, so there's a melted candle here. The candle had 25 notches in it. Burn one notch for each day leading up to Christmas. Today's hasn't been burned. So we're going to be needing a lighter or matches for that. On the floor, you find a broken Santa figurine, and you figure your cat must have tipped it over. You never really wanted the cat in the first place, but your wife insisted on it. You haven't seen it around tonight, though. You pick up the figurine. And we'll go ahead and put up the covers for the kid, just to be a good Samaritan. There's a cold chill in the air, so you lift the duvet covers over your son. You feel like you should call someone to fix the central heating. Let's go ahead and check out that poster, too. Or we can't. Alright. I was hoping there'd be, like, mini Easter eggs there. That is one plain vanilla tree. Why don't you just take a picture of a tree? It's the best you can do. Hey, if you can afford that, you can afford more than I can afford. The bristles of the brush feel rough and unfamiliar. You can't even remember the last time you shaved. You decide to keep onto the brush. People use brushes to shave? Interesting. I don't do that. I just use water and shave. That's it. Uh, pillow. It's very orange. You never really like the pillow. Is this uh, a Donald Trump reference? <laughs> even though he was a president during the time? It's your telephone. You enter the kitchen. As you walk inside, you find your wife asleep on the kitchen table. Both the counter and the table are colored with paper. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the paper roll. There's a paper roll standing on the kitchen table. To take a peek at the calculator, the numbers are disturbingly red. Hmm, disturbingly red, you say. Uh, can you get the... Okay, I guess we'll do that later on. I know what we do here. You carefully move the painting aside to reveal your safe. This is where you've hidden your wife's present. You better get it out undetected. No one in the family knows of it but you. There's going to be a paper down here that you need. Something stuck between the foot of the fridge and a wire. You can almost reach it, but you need a proper grip. In which this case, you need the hair clip. I know exactly what to do before he even needs to do it. You carefully remove the hair clip claw from your wife's head, and hoping not to wake her up, and you succeed. Cool. So now let's go ahead and throw that in. Use a hair clip claw to extend your reach and pull out a bl small blue paper. It's a safe combination you wrote down. So we'll go ahead and use that for the safe, obviously. Use the combination from the note you open, the safe. So we take that. You pick up the package from the safe. It's a white dress you bought for your wife. It's cheap, but it looks expensive. Would you get a like, bargain hunt or something? Deciding it was a bad idea leaving the safe revealed, you hide it behind the painting again. Okay, so go ahead and put this onto the counter now. Put it onto the counter now. You place the package onto the counter so your wife sees it when she wakes up. I guess he doesn't want to wake her up just by putting it in front of her. That's totally fine. I, mean, I guess it's better to put it there anyway. Aw, so you return the hair clip to your wife. 
You enter the living room. As soon as you do, the telephone begins to ring. You pick up the phone. Well, that was an incoherent mess. Slightly annoyed, you hang up. You've been disturb you've been having disturbing calls on the line all week, and you regret not complaining to the phone company about it earlier. They're now closed for the holidays. Okay, I guess that's a misfortune. I doubt they'll call again though, I don't remember it being annoying. As soon as you enter the bathroom, you feel a strange sensation in your stomach. Before you know it, you're looking at your lunch. As you get up, you notice you've knocked over a bottle of nail polish. And that's when you need to get the paper roll. You also need the brush for that too. It's going to be needed for Santy. Sandy Claws. I like that the subtitles from the last video actually called it Sandy Claws. <laughs> Hopefully they detect it that way again. Alright, so now we'll walk back to the bathroom. Shouldn't be along now until the end. Boom. Use the paper roll to mop up the nail polish. It's thicker than you thought it would be. And you rub harder, you cut your hand onto the glass from the bottle, but the blood is unrecognizable against the crimson of the polish. You pick up the shard of glass. Someone could seriously hurt themselves with this. You realize the paper is not enough to remove the stain. Give up and dismiss of the soaked paper roll and are nearly bin. Okay, why didn't he throw the glass into the bin? Game plot? <laughs> so, where's the... there it is. As you stroke the shaving brush into the wet nail polish, you recall an early era of your life when you had time for a hobby. You've also ruined a perfectly fine shaving brush. Alright, let's go ahead and... oh, we can go ahead and put this onto Santa now, right? Sandy. You figured that won't do any... wait, what? Oh, I didn't super glue Sandy Claws yet. Okay, now we can go ahead and do the brush thing. Yeah, I was confused there earlier. <laughs> you apply the nail polish to the Santa figurine, however the beard seems to be missing. That's when you go ahead and use the shard of glass for the pillow to cut it open. And you get some of the cotton out. Windows open, by the way, so you're going to hear some doggy barks. You use the shard of glass to cut open the pillow. You can always tell your wife it was an accident or the cat. Why would it be the cat, though? I guess he really detests the cat that much. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and pick up some of the cotton. Pick up some of the cotton inside the pillowcase. It's soft, you can add it to your pocket lint collection. There's also something here too. Pick up the lighter and thumb it away. Your wife kicked the habit years ago. She must have been saving this one for a rainy day. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and super glue this one too, wherever that's at. There it is. So I applied super glue. We can go ahead and put this onto Sandy Claws now. Stick the cotton onto the painted Santa figurine, it's finally fixed. Cool. Now we'll go ahead and send this off to the kid here. You got a perfectly new Sandy Claws here. Oh yeah, we got the lighter too, so we can go ahead and light the candle. Bam. Bam. The lit candle brings out a peaceful atmosphere to the room. Alright, so now it is officially Christmas with that lit up. There's the Christmas light, so it's not a vanilla tree anymore. Those were, uh, put up very quickly. <laughs> you see your wife sitting on the couch, wearing the red dress you bought her for Christmas. Wait, I thought it was white. Something's very fishy here. I hope you don't mind me opening my present early. I was just too curious to leave it be. You don't mind. I've decorated the tree for us. It's still missing the most important piece, though. Won't you go up to the attic and fetch it? You comply. Here's the hook to pull down the trap door. Good luck. Like, good luck. Are you leading me to something spooky right now? I think she is. Go on. Man, it's so hard to interact with this resolution. The attic is dark and humid, and a cold chill derives from the walls. Yeah. This is why I should get, like, a flashlight. Aren't they, like, a buck at the dollar store? You step into the darkness, and you can't see a thing before you. Right now, you wish you had that lighter didn't die. 
That is a creepy hand, by the way. Imagine if Fearful Harmony was playing right now. You're now totally surrounded by the darkness, and you know it's too late to turn back. You don't remember the attic being this long. Hopefully you won't trip into anything. As you make your way through, a chill creeps down your spine as you suddenly realize you've never been up here before. It, it's not real then. I've seen the ending. Okay, so here's the star. As you bend over to pick up the star, you hear a knocking at the door down below. You quickly pocket the store and get ready for the walk back. I like the way that I said star. Star. Freaking hate when that happens, dude. The first step of the ladder breaks under the weight of your foot. In which this case, you'll see in a bit. You wonder how you will be remembered. It's a stool. That's what the ladder was. Your wife and your cat were already dead when the police found them on the couch. She was killed with a close range in the back of the head. The cat from a slit throat. So the cat was slit with the Santa figurine? Your wife was still alive when she crawled from the kitchen reaching for the phone in the living room. She collapsed on the sofa, her clothes now soaked red from all the blood. Your son was found suffocated with a pillow in his room. He died almost instantly. They found you with a rope around your neck hanging from a lone hook in the ceiling. That's what the phone call was. The very incoherent one. So me putting the covers on the kid, does that have a relation with the whole pillow death? I'm going to assume so. And in the end, I just committed suicide. So yeah, um, the ending could definitely be beyond the pale for most people. Very epiplectic. Well, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this playthrough of Merry Christmas, Alfred Robbins. This is uh, all the people that worked on it. I wish that you could record it on a full screen resolution. That's the only issue I have with this game. Because I had to record in the small resolution, so it's hard to click on anything. It's hard to interact. And, uh, yeah, it was just very irritating. But it was still easy to play through. So the engine by Chris Jones. Engine? Wait, they developed the engine and then they made the game? Wow, talk about making it from scratch. Thanks for playing. And, uh, Merry Christmas? I expected a Merry Christmas here, but okay. So, yeah, that's gonna be the end of it. Hope you all enjoyed this playthrough, and hope you all have a great Christmas. See you all next year. Stay awesome, Gator Saviors. I'm too healthy? What does that have to do with me being a student at this school? I'm going to have McDonald's. I'm going to have McDonald's. I'm going to have McDonald's. <laughs>